and we're in, we're in um, the Proverbs chapter 1. And I want to ask a question, and you think about it for a minute. What is wisdom? I mean, most of us who are married realize that the better half of our relationship has the wisdom that we wished we had. And yeah, I see the men all shaking their heads. They understand what I'm saying. Wisdom. A, a definition would be the use of knowledge in a practical and successful way. This is the ability to use knowledge. Sometimes we have a lot of knowledge and I'm not too sure how to use it. I know I get that way sometimes, just sometimes, not all the time. Barbara's snickering over there, I see her. And as we talk about biblical wisdom, we want to talk about wisdom that relates to life and conduct. Wisdom from God to help us maintain our composure and our position in life. Proverbs. Interesting book in the Bible. A proverb comes from the Hebrew term meaning to compare and a key for easy memorization and written copies. Remember the Old Testament for many, many years, for hundreds of years, the only way they could reproduce the Old Testament was handwriting. And the printing press wasn't invented until what, the late, late 1600s? Uh, because the King James Bible was one of the first printed Bibles and that was 1611. So all of the manuscripts that were copied by hand before then. So Proverbs was written to make it easy to copy. It was also made easy to memorize. That's where you take a verse of scripture, you put it on a three by five card, you keep it where you can see it, and you remember it. You memorize scripture. In our Sunday school class, we're doing that right now, aren't we, class? I heard some yeses. Amen. Thank you very much. And we have three memory verses now we're working on. Galatians 2, 8, and 9, Philippians 1, 21, and Romans 5, 8. The easiest one we'll say, we can say together right now, can't we? Galatians 2, 20. What did I say? 8 and 9. Oh, excuse me, 220. Huh? See? So I'm glad somebody was listening. That was one. Well, two. Barbara had her hand up, too. Philippians 121, the first part of the verse simply says what? To me, to live is Christ. Christ. Oh, we're getting it. We're getting there. But we want to memorize Scripture, and that's so important. And that's why the pro book of Proverbs was written the way it was written. So the Proverbs were easy to memorize. Um, Proverbs gives us instructions on how to live a godly life. It assures us of rewards in the life to come. Their foundation is the law of God found only in the... Found only in the... Come on, you all got to stay awake with me here. It's only found where? Where do we find the wisdom of God? God's Word. Thank you very much. Okay. Ooh, we got to back up a little bit here. In 1 Kings chapter 4, it tells us that Solomon wrote approximately 3,000 Proverbs and has written most of the book of Proverbs. The major theme of the book is godly wisdom looking at the world through the grid of God's truth, the Bible. God's truth. And that's what was written for us to know. The Bible is not something theoretical. It is practical. It affects every area of life. It's not just coming to church. It's not just Sunday school, though it's good to have you all in Sunday school. The Bible is to affect every area of your life. 
2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, one of my favorite verses of Scripture, simply says, all Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That was God's Word. And who did God write His Word to? Us. Thank you. You're getting better. You're getting closer. It was written, written for us. Now, the purpose of the book of Proverbs is found in chapter 1 of the book of Proverbs. And in verses 2 through 4, it simply says, To know wisdom. Now, I'm reading from the New... If it doesn't look like exactly what you have in your Bible, I'm reading from the New American Standard which is probably the better translation. King James was written in Shakespearean English 400 years ago, so my wife's shaking her head like this down there because she loves her King James Bible. <laughs> and I do too, don't get me wrong, but I use the New American Standard because the print is bigger. Okay. To know wisdom and instruction, to discern the sayings of understanding, to receive instruction in wise behavior, righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the naive, to the youth, knowledge and discretion. Boy, this says a mouthful. We have knowledge, we have discerning, we have, uh, we're receiving instruction in righteousness, and God gives prudence to the naive, to the youth, knowledge and discretion. To know, that is to recognize and comprehend. To discern is to understand. To receive is to take in internalize. You know, the Word of God isn't just in a book to carry on Sunday morning. It isn't just to put on the pew so you've got a place to sit next week. And we know people that even do that in some churches. Their Bible is used to mark their place so they can have a place to sit. That wasn't God's intention for the Word of God. The God intended for us to take it and internalize it. And as we internalize it, to give is to apply the safeguard against being misled. You know, if you go through the book of Acts, you look at the Thessalonian Christians, and the, as Paul preached there, and then went from there to Berea, the Berean Christians did what? They searched the scriptures daily to see that what he was saying was true, because he was preaching from what? The Old Testament. In Paul's day, they had the Old Testament in Greek. They didn't have a New Testament yet, because he hadn't finished writing it. But that's what was God was providing. And this is a safeguard against being misled. Now, the key verse for the book of Proverbs is verse 7. Verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And instruction, excuse me. Now, keep in mind, and, then, and this is said also, and it kind of coordinates with verse... Uh, Verse 10 in chapter 9, and I'll turn to that quick. I did not give that to the folks in the back, but I'll. This verse says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Understanding. God wants us to understand what we read. It's just not memorizing words, it's memorizing concepts for us to apply to our lives. And he says that this fear, this is the starting point of the essence of wisdom. Fear. Are we to be afraid of God? In a sense, yes. But in a sense, fear means godly reverence. Because God is who? Our Father, if we're a believer, 
through the Lord Jesus Christ. God is our Father, and we come to him as our Father. So the reverence of the Lord is the beginning. This reverential trust in the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Now, when they translated the Hebrew into Greek, they used the word, Greek word epigonosko, which means knowledge gained by experience. God wants us to gain experience in the Word of God. Instruction, understanding and applying what we learn. The word fear is to express reverence for God, to respect God for who he is. This day and age, we don't see much of that. We don't hear much of that in the, in the vocabulary of a lot of people. Uh, we are to listen carefully to what God says in his word, to obey what he says in his word. Because how does God speak to us? He doesn't have a cell phone. Well, what, what would Paul do with a cell phone? Can you see him texting now? Thumbs are just, I mean, he'd wear the thumbs off of that thing. He didn't have a cell phone. He had to write down God's thoughts as God gave it to them. Listen. You know, that's God calling, yeah. Listen carefully to what he says in his word. So that means we've got to do what? What's the little four-letter word? Read it, it. Read it and study it. Thank you, Chick. You've got to be studying God's word. And that Greek word means to earnest, diligently search the scripture. That's a responsibility of every Christian, not just the pastor, not just Fred and I, not just the Sunday school teachers, but every Christian has the responsibility to know God's word. And that's what the book of Proverbs was about. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools. Ah, here we go. A fool is someone who is dull, close-minded, stubborn. And that word is used 49 times in the book of Proverbs. A fool despises, and the Hebrew is to hold in contempt or belittle wisdom and instruction. And may I add, if you will please, from God. How many of us have ever failed God? <laughs> Every one of us, we can put our hands up on that one. And that's why God gave us 1 John 1, 8 and 9, didn't he? And it's simply a verse of scripture, or two verses of scripture that says, if we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Always underline those little words in your Bible so when you come back to it, you can see them. You know, we're going to sin, we're going to fail God, but we're going to have God's forgiveness if, if and when we ask for it. And that's what God does for us. He gives us his grace. Now, the path of wisdom in life is found in chapters 2 through 4. Wisdom protects our path in chapter 2. Wisdom directs our path in chapter 3. And wisdom perfects our path in chapter 4. And we want to look at chapter 3 today. Just a couple of verses. And then these are my, mine and my wife's favorite verses of Scripture. As we look at what God has to say to us in this particular section. And as we look at chapter 3, the first 12 verses talk about the conditions to meet and the 13 through 35 blessings to enjoy. In verses 1 to 4, he says you got to learn God's truth. In verses 5 through 8, you got to obey God's truth. 
And in verses 9 to 11, you've got to share God's truth. And in verses 12, 11 and 12, submit to God's correction. But we're just going to look at 5 and 6 as we learn, talk about obeying God's truth. Verses 5 and 6. This promise has never failed if we obey the conditions God has laid down in Scripture. God keeps his promise. No matter what it is or what it's in relationship to, God keeps his promises. We must learn to trust God's truth. And how do we do that? By personally study the word of God. <clears throat> Not just carry the book, own it not just rent it. We are to own God's word. We must let the Holy Spirit write it on the tablet of our heart. And you do that by what? Memorizing scripture. Watchman Nee was the old Chinese pastor. And if you ever have read any of his books, fascinating read. And if you don't have one, let me know. We have a library full of them. And it, uh, where I find them is if you go into the um, bookstores, uh, and I call the um, thrift stores bookstores, <laughs> and, and kind of look, you can find Watchman Nee books that have been put on the shelf for 50 cents and a dollar. And it's a marvelous find. But Watchman Nee has said, we acquire no permanent value from the word of God unless you and I pay the price of making it our own. And it's a price. You've got to work at it. It takes time to study. Fred can attest to that, I'm sure. The time it takes to study God's word to gain the nuggets of truth. Now, as we look at verses 5 and 6, our favorite verses, and it begins with a very, very interesting word. It says trust. It doesn't say trust in man. It doesn't say trust in the economy. It doesn't say trust in whatever. It says trust in the Lord with all your heart. Take refuge in God. The New Testament faith and believe in the Lord. In this particular case, the word Lord, if you notice in your uh, Bibles, it says Lord is all capital letters. And that's the way they differentiate the various words in the Old Testament. And this particular one is we would translate Yahweh or Jehovah. And Jehovah is the self-existing one. He is who he is, the eternal I am. As you remember, he spoke to Moses. He says, I am has sent you. It's the redemptive name of deity. And that's the one we want to remember, that our trust is in the Lord. And it's not with our job, our family, but it's with all your heart. Remember, in the Hebrew th way of thinking, the heart was the seat of emotion, the seat of being, the seat of living. The seat of everything was referred to in the heart. It wasn't just a thing to pump blood through the body. Now we know that's what gives us life. And we think of our minds and our brains as containing it. But in the Hebrew thinking, in the Hebrew context, they thought of the heart as being the center of life. And that's why this is written that way. All of the emotion and intellect of life was seated in the heart. Um, all of the understanding, the discernment, reflection, and will of the being came from the heart. In Genesis chapter 3, when man sinned, redemption became necessary. 
And it was Jehovah, Elohim, who brought that redemption to mankind. Jehovah, Yahweh, the redemptive name of deity. And notice as it goes on to say, and do not lean on your own understanding. How much of the time do we lean on our own understanding? Now, God has given us a certain amount of intellect, brains, smarts, if you please, and we trust that, and God uses that in our being. But he says, do not lean on your own understanding. And notice that what he says in all your ways, not some of your ways, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight or he will direct your paths. What he has said here is do not be wise in your own eyes. True wisdom comes from God not from ourselves. We have to keep ever in our minds that he will make our path straight. Verse 7 is, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear or have that godly reverence for the Lord, Yahweh, and turn away from evil. But the whole idea of these two verses is trusting in God all of the time. Not some of the time, but all of the time. And that is our responsibility. Why do we think we need to trust God all the time? Think about it for a minute. Why do you trust God all of the time? Okay, all of the time. In 1 Peter 5, 8, Satan is looking to defeat you. Satan is what? A kitty cat? Huh? A lion. A lion. What kind of a lion? A, a roaring lion. Maybe he's hungry. He wants to devour someone. That's the way Satan wants to approach you and I, like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. And that's so important for us to remember and to realize. Um, so all of the time, we are to trust in the Lord. That's total commitment to the Lord. Travel the road as God directs. But the only way that can happen is if we have a relationship with him. And no matter how large a crowd we ever have in our church, there's always somebody here who doesn't know him as Lord and Savior. When we talk about God directing, we talk about God directing his children, those that know him personally and have that relationship with him and the only way we can have a relationship with God is in John 14 6 it says it is through Christ Jesus the Lord is the only way we can have that relationship our new memory verse for our class is Romans 5 8 which says God demonstrated his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners Christ did die for us. And that's what people have to realize and remember, that no matter who and where we are, the Lord Jesus has died for you and I. And it's only by grace you've been saved through faith and that none of yourselves, it is a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So as we look at these verses in Proverbs, it always leads us to the New Testament as well, because 
Everything in the Old Testament was a foreview of what God would do in the New Testament. So as we look at trusting in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding in some, no, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct, it should say, all your paths, or make all your paths straight. And do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord all the time and turn from evil all the time, all the time. And I think is what God is trying to get across to you and I. So as we wait before him this morning, let's bow our heads and our hearts, examine our own lives, and the way we currently are walking as God's children. Are we trusting? Are we committed? And are we traveling the road as God directs? Only he knows, and only he can take care of that. So let's bow our heads and our hearts before the Lord right now. And as we wait quietly in these few moments, if there's a need in your life and on your heart, make it known by lifting your hand and let us know that you have a, a need that we can pray about. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hands are going up all over the auditorium. Folks that are realizing that only God can meet every need is that we trust the Lord in all our ways we're acknowledging him again this morning our father we thank you for your word we thank you that it's a lamp to our feet that it's a light to the pathway help us to think about what you've said to us this morning through these verses about trusting in you with all of our heart and leaning not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledging you and realizing you will make our paths straight because you love us. You're our Father. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.